when a leafcutter ant soldier engages a speckled house spider. It's power versus patience. In the depths of an equatorial jungle, a million-strong colony of leafcutter ants is busy farming the rainforest. Each worker focused on the production of fungus. Leafcutter ants are really the farmers of the animal world. They cut vegetation that they then grow fungus on. So the ants actually live off of the fungus, not the plants. They might be peaceful, but you aggravate these agrarian ants at your peril. At the first sign of trouble, you find yourself face to face with a leaf cutter soldier. There's got to be constant guarding of the colony so that they don't get attacked, both foraging lines and the colony itself. You don't mess with a leaf cutter ant soldier. These hulking warrior ants dwarf the workers. Their bodies are protected by tough armor. The massive bulbous head supports some of the ant world's most fearsome weapons. Strong, hardened mandibles, powerful enough to pierce human skin, crush and slice. Look at those mandibles. They really act like chainsaws. If you want a leaf cut up, you call a worker. If you want another animal cut up, you call the soldier. A party of invading trap jaw ants has ventured too far into leafcutter territory. Workers alert the troops. Leafcutter ants make a surprising diversity of sounds and vibrations that they use to communicate among themselves by rubbing various body parts together. Dispatched to deal with the interlopers, the leafcutter soldier launches a withering attack. Its enormous mandibles clamp down. Although the soldier is wiggling its abdomen around, it doesn't have formic acid, it doesn't have a sting. However, its mandibles are so strong that it's literally able to take control of the situation. Ordinarily, trap jaws are ferocious fighters, but against the soldiers, they don't stand a chance. One by one, intruders are systematically torn apart. As you can see, cutting this trap giant in half was no more trouble than the workers cutting leaves in half. Trap jaw body parts litter the leaves. It's an awesome display of brute strength and single-minded savagery. But not every fighter in this neck of the woods relies on size and raw power. Small and delicate, the speckled house spider seems like an unlikely serial killer. You might think that something called a house spider isn't up to the task of surviving in a forest full of dangerous creatures. But let me tell you, this spider is more than capable of surviving encounters that would send others home in tears. This relative of the Black Widow and Redback is built for life on the web. Her long, spindly legs are agile enough to navigate her silken web like a tightrope walker. The speckled house spider is a sit-and-wait predator, happy just to hang at home 
and let her untidy web do all the work. It might look like the result of lousy housekeeping, but that chaotic tangle of lines is actually a very effective way of catching prey. It's extremely strong and also laced with lots of globules of liquid silk so that anything that ventures onto the web or even brushes a single trip line can quickly find itself entangled and in a fight for its life. Before her next hunt begins, she decides to change for dinner. Slipping out of her skin into something more comfortable. The spider's hardened outer skin is literally an external skeleton. And because it doesn't stretch while she grows, she may shed it five to seven times throughout her life. This process is called ecodesiasm. In a lot of ways, it's almost like a rebirth. However, it leaves the spider in a temporarily vulnerable and defenseless position. It will take a while for her new skin to harden. But the speckled house spider had better be ready. The leafcutter ant soldier, fresh from its victory over the trapjaw ant, is on its way. What happens when the mighty warrior and the silky assassin get caught in a web of intrigue? Granted, she's probably not going to be in a hurry to get too close, but if he stumbles onto her web, he's going to be in for a rude shock. Next, a lethal leaf cutter versus the speckled assassin. Then, two gymnasts go for the jugular. And later, brute force collides head on with a delicate destroyer. Cutter Ant Soldier, alone on patrol, is just inches away from a speckled house spider's silken trap. One false step, and there will be war. The Leafcutter Ant Soldier has size and strength, with powerful mandibles to cut and crush. The speckled house spider uses silk and venom to overcome the enemy. Which strategy will prevail? The leaf cutter soldier suddenly finds itself in a sticky situation. We already know that this soldier can cut an opponent in two, but when she's gotten caught in this web, she's really on shaky ground. The speckled house spider doesn't move. With an intruder this large and dangerous, she's happy to play the waiting game. The ant tries to chew through its bonds, but succeeds only in becoming more entangled. Finally, choosing her moment, the spider descends and starts throwing thread. Whatever she does, the house spider must avoid those jaws. Just one snip could open her up like a bursting water balloon. Then, moving in cautiously, she delivers a toxic kiss, narrowly avoiding the ant's slashing jaws. But this battle isn't over. Prey this large will need more than one dose. Again and again, the spider dances with death. Ducking the gnashing mandibles to inject more venom. She retreats and waits again. Killing time while her potent chemical cocktail finishes off this soldier of misfortune. In a monster bug war, no matter how formidable your weapons, 
It pays to fight battles on your home turf. You know, I think this is just a classic case of the bigger they are, the harder they fall. End of story.